Hey guys, today we are going to address the problem of the Mythic Editions. So just to give you some background, the Mythic Editions are where you get the Mythic Planeswalkers. You get half a box and you pay a enormous price tag. Now when it went live, a lot of people were able to order two. It turned out there was no supply. Imagine that. Imagine a very poor website with very poor planning, not having enough supply for the demand. And that's what happened. Therefore, they had to cancel. So people who wanted two only got one. Now, what happened here is an interesting tale of many people like Wedge ordering via his friends, his families, his, I don't know, his uh, Twitter, the people who follow him on Twitter, they would order on his behalf, and that is what he's saying here. Just got a call from Hasbro Corporate. Over half of our Mythic Edition orders have been voided. Rough way to start the day. Hashtag MTG. Obviously, he's putting this out there because he wants Hasbro to make right by him and give him his multiple orders. Now, how many orders did he make? Maybe a couple hundred, a few hundred not a big deal. So this is greed. This is the definition of greed. We have a product where everyone should just order one or at the very least, they should order two per household and not have so many. So in terms of attitude, in terms of um, I'm going to correlate this behavior to his behavior in terms of donations and how he treats other people in the community. So if you can't help Wedge get more donations, he will treat you poorly unless you are a female. And we'll get into that video later this week where I will present pretty interesting evidence as to just how woke and alert he is when it comes to defending anything female in our community, which is great. I mean, yeah, someone should do that, but my gosh, it's like, it's almost like a second later, a post, someone posted something offensive to a female magic player online and Wedge is already there beforehand. It's kind of creepy, very stalkerous. And yeah, we'll address that later. Dude, this is why I hate e-begging culture. It's just a scam that rewarded by winning a popularity contest. And what about the no presence amazing fodder that did everything right to have a six figure bill? Why does Wedge get the privilege while not being as great a person? So it's because he takes advantage of the situation. I was watching a documentary from another YouTube channel called Rare Earth. And it was talking about the Ponzi scheme in a very poor country. And why does it work? Why does a Ponzi scheme or a con work? Why does Puka trade work? It's because you have very uneducated individuals who don't know the dangers of an e-scam and they just fall for it. And by the time they donate a dollar, they are in it for life. They will defend that dollar or defend their donations because they're committed to it and they don't want to look foolish. And the more you defend him, the more you're stuck in that mindset, even though maybe you have realized it is not. Wow, this dude is a fraud. What a blatant thief. Don't forget to donate to me, please, for my ass cancer. It is a condition of cancer from sitting. Because magic players are by definition horrible with money. I don't agree with that last one. Uh, I do know many players who are not good with money, but I think that you can be not good with money and then have protections, right? Like, so the elderly are very prone to scams and the law protects them or the young. So the, a young person cannot, I think under 18, cannot sign a binding contract or maybe under 16 cannot sign a binding contract so if you are cheating 12 year olds, well, you're not going to win. You're not going to get their Pokemon cards. You cheated them, right? Unsleeve Media are not usually a fan of causing shit, but crapping on a sport I love. So Wedge, uh, in this case, he's talking about, I believe, MMA. 
He is incredibly opinionated about so many different topics. It is mind-boggling as to how a person like this can actually exist. And um, I'm shocked and both kind of shocked. So he is an expert in civil rights war tactics, I guess. He's an expert in everything Donald Trump. He's an expert in politics and government and law. He's an expert in pro magic play. He's an expert in pit bull, raising pit bulls, getting uh, health bills, health care. And that's what his audience wants him to be good at. Um, it's not whether or not he is a good person or not. It's whether or not the audience at that day feels like donating money to him. So yeah, I think you do have a lot of dangers um, in our community. And one of the biggest dangers is a lot of new players who don't know better. Um, they donate their hard-earned money to someone who does not appreciate it. And my best, and, you know, I present all the evidence to you guys. I presented the time where John asked him for seven months in a row, paid seven months in a row of Patreon fees, and then he didn't even get a signed card. When you talk about disrespect, had John been an attractive female, do you believe that would have happened to her? Do you believe that John would not get a signed card for seven months after paying $10 every month and after asking for tracking almost every single day for four months? No, he wouldn't. Um, he absolutely won it. So you have someone who has all the characteristics of, I'll talk about it in the next video, but certain things that he does and certain people he reacts to and certain, certain things he does not do, um, it, it's just like one of those creepy stories you read online about so-and-so. And, um, there's a YouTuber, his name is Jew Wario. That's his name. I'm that's his name. That's his YouTube name. And everyone thought he was a happy go lucky guy. Everyone in the video community loved him. And it turned out he was a sexual predator. And he was grooming younger female audiences. He was using his YouTube channel to attract younger female audiences to uh, groom them. Okay, so I'll just leave it there. And he was on so many channels, so many people loved him, and no one really knew about this until after he committed suicide, which is, and then after he committed suicide, everyone and their grandmother made a tribute video to how great of a person he was, and that was like a slap in the face to all the victims he had uh, harassed, sexually harassed. Um... I have a hunch, like I'm very good at predicting human behavior uh, and I know what Weds wants. I know what his goal, eventual goals are. Uh, his objective is quite simple. Uh, to Weds, 50% of Magic players are female because that's how he interacts with them. And if you ask, why does Wizards of the Coast believe half their player base is female when clearly it is not? It might have a lot to do with social media. If Wizard of Coast and Weds and Tolarian, as soon as the female posts, boom, attention, boom, attention. And that if a male were to post the same thing, no attention. Uh, one good example of this culture outside magic is I remember a, a post, and this was by a couple. And the, the dude created like unicorn, a gudon, like unicorn master edition, one of the hardest gudons to create. I think it was the hardest gudon to put together. It was masterfully done. It was amazing. He posted on the gudon Reddit and he got like two likes. And then a attractive female, which turned out to be his wife, posted, you know, essentially her butchering, you know, a uh, gudon. And then a question would be like, hey, can anyone help me? Thousands of comments, thousands of likes. I mean, come on. That's like the definition of wedge to me is that part of our internet culture where you have, like you, you stack it all up together, which I'm going to do for you. And it just, you have to come to the conclusion that, whoa, this is like very strange. Like this is very strange behavior. 
And have we seen this behavior uh, sometime before? And the answer is yes, we have. And what was the result of that? Uh, ended very poorly. And I will be showing you that example as well as kind of the similarity between what Wedge does often. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.